Welcome to the Tuning In Podcast, where we talk alignment, intuition, and our internal guidance system. We cover woo-woo topics in an approachable and practical way. I'm your host, Dana Evans of Alignful.com. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Tuning In Podcast. This is episode 91. So (laughs) I have been going through it, everybody. (laughs) It's interesting because, well, I will tell you this whole story of what's going on, but I'm going to tell you this story through another story and another little lesson about the mind. How about that? So before my trip to Lake Tahoe, so this is now, I believe three weeks ago. So one, two, oh, three, four weeks ago. (laughs) And actually five weeks ago, if I were really to look at my calendar. So about mid June, the week of like the 14th, and then the 21st, I was drinking so much coffee. Like it had slowly built up and I was like drinking probably three cups every morning. And that's a lot for me. And I always know because I make the coffee every morning because I'm usually up before John and I was making eight cups of coffee, but we were running out And John and I were both wanting more coffee. And that is like when I make the eight cups, which I think they're five ounce cups. So 40 ounces is what that is. Like usually I would have a cup or two and then John would have the rest and there'd be some left over. But all of a sudden there was none left over and we were both like, Ooh, should we make some more coffee? And that was because my consumption changed. And John's like, you're taking all the coffee. I'm like, it's my coffee too. And just, okay. I was drinking a lot, but I felt fine. So I was drinking a lot of coffee, but I wasn't feeling particularly anxious. I was sleeping fine. It wasn't like tipping me over the edge in the morning where I was feeling like dizzy or fluttery heart, any of that. But my mind was like, this is too much coffee. This is too much coffee. You need to cut back. But I rationalized, okay, well... We're going to Lake Tahoe. I'm going on vacation. Sometimes I drink more coffee when I'm on vacation. So I don't want to, I don't want to make that decision right now. So when I come back from Lake Tahoe, I'm going to cut down on coffee. That was what my mind decided. And I even texted Daniela, my brother's girlfriend, and I said, I need to cut down on coffee and I will do it when I get back from the trip. Like I was so committed to this. And this was a mind story. I just want you guys to start seeing what shoulds and decisions your mind shows up with. Now, it might seem perfectly rational, but my mind was taking a current situation. It was judging it as bad. Then it was planning to change the situation at a set time. This is what the mind does. And this is not what I'm living into right now. As you remember, I'm living from moment to moment. I'm following the nudges. I'm living through the inner voice. I'm deconditioning. I'm following my projector human design. And this is a conditioned response, what just unfolded. But here's the beauty. Life has a beautiful way of guiding us towards what is right. We don't have to make the decision, the determination, or control it. And let me tell you what happened, because here I am today. I am now how many weeks after Lake Tahoe? I guess I'm two weeks from returning from Lake Tahoe. And with that, I'm having, especially last week, I was having maybe four ounces of coffee a day. So I've cut way back from those three cups that I was having. Well, how did I get here? And let me tell you, it was not because I got back and said, okay, time to cut down on coffee. I said so and went through like a stressful or challenging willpower-based process of cutting back coffee. That is not what happened. That's not how I did it. Life actually handled it for me. Thank you, life. And here's how it started. So I went to Lake Tahoe on the 23rd of June to visit my brother 
and I stayed with him for one, two, three, four, five days before my family got there. And then I moved from my brother's house into an Airbnb with my parents for one, two, three, four, five, six days. Okay. Wow. That's gone a long time. And (laughs) when I was staying with my brother, he, well, my brother and I both love good coffee. And I don't mean like Dunkin' Donuts, cream and sugar, Dutch Brothers. I'm sorry. I know everyone loves Dutch Brothers. I can't do it. Okay. I don't mean a Starbucks sweetened macchiato. I mean high quality, well sourced, single origin, mindfully roasted small batch coffee, (laughs) which basically can be like applied to everything that I like in life, (laughs) like my clothing brands, my skincare, my makeup my food, my alcohol, my coffee. It's just like Dana. Okay. So my brother though, he's extra fancy and he makes a Chemex pot of coffee. So it doesn't make that much coffee. So when I was staying with my brother, we were having full strength coffee, but he was making the Chemex every day and I'd have pretty much one cup, like eight ounces of coffee. And that was it. But those first three days or well, Thursday and Friday were really busy days for me. I had client, I was taking client sessions those days. And so I was like, I'd have my coffee in the morning and I had early morning calls because I was an hour ahead of where I am. I was on Pacific time instead of mountain time. So my calls were earlier. So I had my coffee, my one cup of coffee, and then was like into the calls. And by the time I was done working, it was like 1230 or one, in which case I didn't really need coffee. I needed lunch. And then a couple hours later, a cocktail. So I immediately went from having three cups of coffee to having one or maybe one and a half. And that was when I stayed with my brother. Then parents got here on Sunday and they brought their own coffee for our Airbnb. Also another great coffee. My parents are into the good coffee now. It's Sweet Bloom. It's a local roaster in Denver. They've won a ton of awards. They're good people. I am literally... 16 minutes from, there are three Sweet Bloom locations in Colorado and I am 16 minutes from each of the three locations. I actually mapped it the other day to see how close I was because I was deciding which location to go to. Like what are the odds of that? So lucky me. And I just massive shout out to Sweet Bloom. I am totally putting their link in the show notes. If you want to taste like some really delicious, high quality coffee, their Migration 4.0 blend is so good. That's out right now, but really all of their blends are delicious. So you could order some for yourself. And their decaf is amazing. I just need to say that because I always used to say you can take the caffeine out of my coffee, but you can't take the coffee out of my hand. So I love a good decaf and the Sweet Bloom decaf, I would not know it's decaf. It's so good. It's a natural process. They don't use the formaldehyde, which a lot of decaffeination processes use formaldehyde to take the caffeine out, which is like F that shit. (laughs) No, we're not doing that. So this uses a water process. Anyway, I know I can tell you so much about coffee. So when I was in college, even in high school, like I always went to local coffee shops in Denver. Colorado has a great coffee scene. And I just loved being like known by the baristas. Like it was my first like experience of being a local and just hanging out, chatting with the baristas, drinking coffee. And then in college, I went to college in Boston. And at the time, Boston, oh my God, they had such a kick-ass coffee scene. And I started a blog called Traveling for Coffee travelingforcoffee.blogspot.com. Remember Blogspot? Um, That was actually my first ever blog, my first online presence as I'm reflecting. And my roommates and I would travel and go to different coffee shops every weekend and then I'd blog about them. (laughs) And I just loved it. Like, gosh, how fun is that? I think the blog is still live if you go to that URL. I'll have to check after I record this episode, but just to say, like, I really appreciate good coffee. I appreciate the experience of going to a coffee shop. I've always loved working at coffee shops and I just love coffee with or without caffeine. So that's my little interlude. So my parents 
had Sweet Bloom Coffee, and they do half-calf. So they had it pre-mixed where it was half of their decaf and half of their regular blend. It was pre-mixed, pre-ground for ease during our trip. So then I go from having one, one and a half cups of full strength with my brother, move into the Airbnb with my parents, and half-calf, half-strength. And I found myself only having one cup and maybe one and a half. So like same technically number of cups, half the amount of caffeine. And I wasn't really affected by it again because we were busy. It was like we were going out and about during the day. We were going here. We were going there. And I wasn't really thinking about it. So I also had started having these athletic greens again I'm really loving it. It came in just at the time when I was needing, like, I felt like I was needing some bonus nutrients and support to my system. And just like having something that I could take every day that is like covering my basis. Like it has like ashwagandha, it has cholera, it has barley, wheatgrass, like all these great herbs and nutrients that I need. (laughs) And there's even probiotics in it. And it's this like green powder. You put it in, you add some drops of vitamin D because we all need vitamin D. I also add zinc to mine. You shake it up and you chug it and drink it. And you have that before your coffee. So I'd started drinking that before going to Tahoe. And they say that when you drink that, you start noticing that because you need to have it like 30 minutes or so before your coffee or 20. And they say that you're not craving the caffeine as much. So again, this was all happening. This was not planned, but I had started taking that right before I left for Tahoe. Then I go to Tahoe and immediately cut, like I'm still having my greens in the morning, the athletic greens. I will put a link in there if you want to try it or if you have any questions, let me know. I'm actually really loving it, but I'll put a link. If you can order it, you get five free little travel packs if you want to try it out. But So having those in the morning, cut it down with my brother, then move in with my parents in the Airbnb, having half calf, less coffee. And it was just like everything flowed. I didn't feel headaches. I didn't feel cranky or exhausted from not having caffeine. Then I get home from the trip and was totally spent. As you know, if you listened to episode 90, where I explained my trip to Tahoe. I was so tired and I was so tired that I was like, I need three days off from life. So we got home on our Friday and I did a digital detox, um, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, deleted the Instagram app, you know, told my clients I wasn't going to be available, closed my computer, closed my phone and just like went in. And what I noticed during that time is I started to feel sensitive to caffeine. So I was like, oh, this is interesting. I would have like a full cup of coffee and I felt dizzy like immediately. And I felt kind of woozy and my system felt so destabilized. So I was having a little bit, then I was like, okay, I can't have that much coffee. And so into that next week, I was having like panic in the night, like, 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 like that, like waking up with panic. And I was like, wow, I'm having too much caffeine. So then I cut down and I'm having maybe four ounces a day. And that seems to be the sweet spot more than that. Like I had a little more than that today and it's too much. I can feel it. And then what also happened that week, and this is the first week of July, is that not only was I feeling really sensitive to caffeine, so it's like I couldn't have more. I was also feeling really sensitive to alcohol. So alcohol didn't taste good. It didn't feel good it wasn't having a pleasant effect. So I'm like, I can't really have alcohol. can't really have caffeine. My whole system started to get sensitive. And so right there, now I've gotten back from Tahoe and I cut back on my caffeine, but I didn't, it didn't, my mind didn't plan. Do you see what I'm trying to show you is I thought that I needed to cut down on caffeine, but my mind couldn't have planned this beautiful experience of easing me off of caffeine. And now I'm here where it's like, I naturally eased off of it and it feels great. (laughs) Same with alcohol. Like I'm like, wow, I just like can't really have much alcohol. I didn't have to be like, I have to use my willpower and cut out alcohol because I'm a bad person, right? Or I have to use my willpower to cut out coffee because it's bad. It's too much. It was my body told me. The reason I'm drinking less coffee right now is because my body told me we can't handle the caffeine. And I think that's such a beautiful lesson of 
What is possible when we choose to tune in and operate from our inner guidance versus from the mind? And we let life participate in living. If we let life happen versus trying to control life. Such a simple example, but you can imagine like I've let go of resistance and with that, like I ended up having less caffeine and then I was so tuned into my body because like I took those three full days off. I was like feeling that I could notice the subtleties of what it wanted and not. And then as I've continued, what's kind of happened is I've kind of done like more of a deep dive back into the like cracked open phase. So in my work, hmm, And so now I'm transitioning. So there's your coffee story. Now I'm transitioning to give you like a life update of where I'm at energetically and emotionally, because this is the work I do with my clients. So this weekend, actually, I was working on, I am creating a client portal for my one-to-one clients. So the insight coaching experience, which by the way, I am opening up again for new clients which I'm really excited about. I'm in a place where I've had a couple phase out. And so now I have space again for the fall. So think August, September, October timeframe. If you're starting to feel this inkling to go inward, to kind of explore, to create space in your life, I am definitely opening space up. So send me an email or an Instagram DM so we can talk. Because now it's getting even more exciting. So I'm creating this portal with all these resources and some bonus trainings for my one-to-one clients. And one of the things I did a while ago after my own sloth experiment was I created a, based on my own experience and those of my clients, like a success journey. Like here are the phases that you're going to go through. You may go through when we work together. And the phases are curiosity, connection, Okay, then (laughs) the phase is crack open, surrender, and renewal. I think I actually called them a little bit different in the portal, but those are the main phases. And the cracked open phase (laughs) is the phase where everyone's like, what have I done? I don't want to be here. And you cycle through these phases over and over again, the deeper you get into this work. And they also get a little bit easier, a little bit shorter, but I realize now in reflecting on this past weekend, like two weeks ago, we had cancer new moon, which was like a lot of watery energy. I was talking to a ton of people who are just feeling their feelings. And the whole purpose of this cancer new moon, or excuse me, last week, I think that was like last Monday or Friday the 9th, maybe. The whole point of that new moon was to feel your feelings, sit in it without acting. I was like, okay. So I I definitely communicate that to a lot of people in my life. I leaned into that as well. So I was feeling a lot of emotion. And then last week was like the week before my period. I'm like, man, I'm feeling so much emotion. And then I got my period (laughs) on Saturday after just having such a dark day. And on Sunday, I was feeling a little bit better yesterday and I was doing some cleaning and organizing. And then out of seemingly nowhere, I got hit with just another wave of emotion. And let me tell you, I've been crying a lot lately and it smacked me down. I like crash on the couch, like in not even the fetal position. I was like on my knees with my elbows on the floor, just like these deep grieving cries. Like it felt like something was being pulled out of me. I was just like, like, I mean, I, if, I was crying as if someone had died. And I'm like, oh my God, if John comes home right now, he was on his run and comes and he's going to think someone's died. And like, I'm going to freak him out because it was such an intensity. And as you do this work with me, and definitely as I've done this work, you start to become really attuned to different feelings and different subtleties and nuances within each feeling. So crying isn't just crying, right? There's different ways of experiencing crying. It doesn't just mean sadness. And I can very acutely describe the crying that happened yesterday as grieving. 
I was grieving. And I don't know what I was grieving. But in that, I had this total insight hit me like, oh, how did I miss this? It's like a total projector thing. Like you're so good at seeing other people's lives and then like you don't realize the threads in your own life. I realized through like working on my client success journey through my own grieving experience where like suddenly is like, okay, I already had my period. I already had the new moon. Like this is something else. And I realized that I am in the cracked open phase of my own journey. (laughs) I've been there before. I was there in March. I was there in December. And it only just dawned on me that I'm there again. And what I wrote about this phase is to create something radically new, we must release the old. As the saying goes, things must fall apart before they can come together. This may be the most challenging phase of your journey. (laughs) And it just dawned on me that, oh my gosh, I'm back in a cracked open phase and it totally snuck up on me (laughs) because my mind instead of really looking at what I was feeling, it was rationalizing why I was feeling. Isn't that interesting? And it just hit me yesterday and only because, thank you again, life, that I'd been working on the client success journey. Like I was writing about this stuff, looking at the phases that I'd created. And through that experience of grief, like, okay, I'd already dealt with the period, already dealt with the new moon. I was like, oh, this is what's happening. And then I was able to further reflect the past two weeks, I cannot get away from butterflies. Like I'm watching a show and this random person has a butterfly in their shirt. And then I'm watching a movie and there's like a butterfly poster. And then I turn my phone over and like my phone case that I've had for like a year now has a butterfly on it. And I'm like, I've never seen this butterfly. And then in my Projector Playground, Lauren Armstrong, she was talking about how butterflies are her symbol and she saw one. And then I was having a beautiful conversation with Kimi the other day and a butterfly literally just flew right past my face. Like they are everywhere. And when you read about it in my spiritual animal medicine cards, when you read about butterflies, they're all about transformation. And it asks you like, what phase of the transformation are you in? And I think I'm in the cocoon phase, which of course is hilarious because I'm literally in Jess Lively's cocoon program, which is all about this, the dragon phase of anyone's journey, their spiritual journey. And that's where I'm at. And with this phase, and this is what I have like in your client success portal, like, so you can kind of self-identify like some of the things, here's what I've written about this phase. You feel exposed. You feel an inability to accept the BS. You're growing beyond your comfort zone. You also feel like you're in purgatory, like you've made the leap, but you're not on the other side yet. So you're like, you can't go back even though you want to. You're like, it's you're too far forward to go back, but you're not there yet. It feels like you've jumped off a cliff. Don't let this scare you, by the way. <laughs> this is like, these are good things. <laughs> I know these sound kind of intense, but um, you feel like, I don't know anything. Like, what have I done? Will I ever feel like myself again? Lots of, like, this is my own words. And I didn't realize I was in my own face. Lots of crying and emotional outbursts. Using your on-demand emotional clearing. You're sleeping a ton. You're exhausted. You don't have a ton of energy. You're upgrading your operating system. And I said, this is the breakdown phase. And it can be the most challenging. And that is okay. Things need to fall apart before you can create something new. You may feel like you're grasping, like you're in purgatory, like you want to turn back, but you can't. This is the time to dive into self, to take extra space for yourself, to trust and lean on me, your coach, (laughs) for support and guidance. Not everyone will understand what you're going through, but you can process and share and document what you're experiencing. This is an unlearning. You get to question, like, what am I releasing? What am I being asked to challenge? Am I ready to unbecome, unlearn, decondition? What's coming up now that is ready to be let go? How can I allow myself to feel everything? Am I willing to start seeing myself through a different lens? Can I allow myself to mourn the past version of me? And then there's a Beyonce song or two or three for every phase. (laughs) 
<laughs> this one I have, I care, which is like a really raw song. Ring the alarm. And I was here, you know, it's just like when we start opening the gates to feeling, and that's the other part of this phase is sensitivity. Like you're more sensitive to alcohol. You're more sensitive to caffeine. You're more sensitive to foods, right? Foods might not taste or feel the same. You're more sensitive to people and their energies, right? It's like you're in this raw, cracked open phase where you feel everything. I remember when I was in this phase in March, or maybe it was in December, I remember seeing like a homeless person and just seeing, just seeing them and making eye contact and like getting back into the car and just crying for them. (laughs) So it's just a lot of sensitivity. And, you know, the job in this phase is not to fight it, right? It's not to rationalize it. It's not to deny it or ignore it. It's just to let it be. It's coming up because it feels safe. And the other thing that was coming up for me, especially last week, is a ton of fear, like really somewhat irrational, intense fears. I was really feeling into just mortality and the shortness and preciousness of life and with my family. And it was so much, (laughs) like I could cry right now. It's so much feeling. And I just want you guys to know that like, this is living life. We spend our lives avoiding feeling. We stay busy to keep the scary thoughts away, right? We fill our schedules. Like we go, go, go. We block the thoughts. We move on. We live in our heads. We ignore our bodies. We we follow a plan instead of our intuition, all to avoid feeling because we are freaking scared of it because it hurts. Because no one taught you what to do with feelings. They taught you that you have to feel happy and just be okay. And this is why I do this work. Through insight coaching in particular, we learn and we work together to create space for you in your life. And the space will be created in direct proportion to what is available to you in your life. I had a client when when we had a little call before she officially signed up, she said, well, I have two kids and a family and like a very successful online business. And I can't just like run away for three months. And I said, of course not. And you wouldn't be guided to like, you'll be guided by your inner voice toward exactly what is needed for you and your life situation. And it's beautiful, but for everyone, the work that I do is helping you to create space and then being in that space. Being in the discomfort, right? Sitting with the feelings that come up, letting the feelings come up, processing the feelings. I have a lot of processes and practices that I do with you to let the feelings bubble up, to encourage them to bubble up so that they can be released and let go, right? To release emotional blocks that have been keeping you stuck, to release the need to busy yourself in a way that traps you, to lean into more spaciousness and more ease and less go, 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 because you can't feel when you're so busy, You have to have the space to experience for it to feel safe from the body to let this stuff come up. It's okay that I was on the couch heaving and grieving. And the craziest part was it lasted like, I don't know, five minutes. Like I got a few waves of it, maybe 10 minutes. And then it was like gone. And I think we're used to not fully feeling the experience, especially of grief or tears, sadness, frustration. We're used to semi-feeling it. And then that drags the feeling out. But when you deep dive into that and just let it bubble up and just explode out of you, it moves out of you. And then it's gone. And you can literally go from feeling a deep, painful sadness to fine. 
okay? But we instead, we feel semi-sad for a long time. We It's like by trying to avoid the feeling, we extend the feeling. And I don't want that for you. But you have to have space. I think that's the one thing that we all are missing, especially in this world, is just space and then comfort in the spaciousness and comfort in the discomfort. We're not used to feeling ease. We're not used to things being okay. We're not used to stillness. I had a client say that she was terrified of sitting with her discomfort. She said, well, I always go move the energy. And I'm like, well, that's one beautiful way to do it. But sometimes we have to sit with it. And when we sit with it and create awareness and compassion and space for it, it can actually bubble up to be seen and then truly released. And that's, you know, tuning in. That's heightening our attuning to our spidey senses and attuning to our bodies. And for me, this whole process, it just started with the mind being like, you need to cut out caffeine. And it eased me. I was able to witness my own process of coming back into this cracked open face and becoming sensitive again, having a lot of feelings. Like I was crying the other night and poor John, like he still doesn't fully get it (laughs) because every time I'm crying, he says, what's wrong? Isn't that interesting? Like when people cry, they say, what's wrong? And I said, nothing's wrong. I just have a lot of feelings right now. And it's okay. I told him this. I said, love, I want you to know that it's okay for me to just cry. (laughs) You don't need to fix it. You don't need to stop it. You don't even tell me that I'm okay. You can hold me. You know, you can place a hand on my shoulder. You can leave me alone, truthfully. But this is, this is good. It means I'm moving through something, right? I'm in the cocoon phase. It means transformation is coming and I need to make space for it to happen and allow for the space that I have in my life and not fill it needlessly because life will handle that part for me. If the space needs to be filled, it will. And if it needs to be felt, it will. And that's available to all of you. It doesn't matter You know, I have a client who has four kids and a husband who travels like half the year, okay? And I have clients who are single and, you know, in retirement, shout out. They know who they are. They love you, right? This process is for everyone. You know, you can be retired of one career, right, as one is, and moving into what's next through this process. I've had quite a few people, actually, who have been, like, doing a job change and have space in between and want to have this spacious feeling time so that they don't bring their own crap into their new job. I have worked with moms. I'm not a mom, but I've worked with moms and business owners and we all need this. We truly do. And it's why I do this work. I'm living it and I'm even experiencing the discomforts of it. And that's what I get to share with each of you. So I hope that that was helpful. I love the story of the caffeine. Just start to witnessing the stories of the mind and seeing what you're naturally being guided toward and letting that happen. I don't know how long this cracked open phase will be. It's definitely been really intense for the past two weeks. I felt like I really moved something big yesterday. And we'll see what this week brings. You know, I'm open to whatever it is. And then I actually will be, I'm going to Mexico next week. So the 26th through the 4th. Hey, (laughs) I will definitely make sure I have episodes for you while I'm gone. And yeah, you know, who knows? My trip to Hawaii wasn't what I was expecting because I'd had such a deep dive 
of cracked open phase in March and April. April in Hawaii was a lot about processing what I'd gone through in March. So it's interesting to see these trips as like markers of my own evolution and transformation. And that it's like this built in extra spaciousness to allow for that, you know, in a different environment on my own. So, all right. Well, I hope you have a beautiful week. And if you, anything comes up or you want to share this, please do send me a message. I'm still not on Instagram, but I am checking my DMs occasionally. So at Dana underscore Evans. And of course you can always send me an email to Dana at alignful.com, especially if you're interested to learn more about insight. I'm happy to get on a call with you to talk about the insight three or six month coaching program, because I don't get on the call to sell you. I will tell you that I actually get on the call to find out where you're at and what you're looking for to see if this will actually serve you. So it's a great place to ask questions and kind of figure out what you're needing right now. And if, if, and how I can support you. So all of the links of everything I've talked about will be in the show notes and I'm excited. So next week you'll get an episode. I'll be in Mexico. So I'll probably pre-record an episode unless I do it there. Who knows? But until then, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for joining me on another episode of the Tuning In Podcast. As always, if this would resonate with anyone you know, please share the episode. You can follow along with my journey on Instagram at Dana underscore Evans or find me on my website at alignful.com.